What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you a brand new one line installer for Vlad Mantic SD Next, which is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, fork of Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI. Now, essentially, it's the same as Stable Diffusion Web UI. It's a fork of it, as you can see here, but it's quite a few commits ahead and quite a few commits behind. Essentially, that means that this has a ton of features that Automatic 11 doesn't have while supporting all of the same extensions, etc., at least for the most part. If you'd like to see exactly what is different, you can see the change log here from the GitHub linked down below, and you should see some information on what's different between this and the original Automatic 11.11 repo. There's a ton of things here, and personally, I did find this faster at first for certain things, but I'm really just used to Auto 11, so that's kind of what I've been using up to this point, but I'd highly recommend you check this out, as maybe with your workflow, this works perfectly for you. Maybe you like how it looks, or of course you see a huge speed improvement. It really comes down to what kind of user you are. And of course, if you'd like to not duplicate all of your models and things like that, you can create some links between the folders using something like link shell extension, which means that you only have one hard copy of the models on your PC while being able to use it in SD Next and the original Automatic 11 Stable Diffusion Web UI. Without further ado, you can manually install it by following the install instructions on this page here, or of course, you can use my one-line installer that simplifies the entire process. I've been doing a lot of these open source one-line installers recently, and they really should save you a ton of time, but they do take a lot of time and effort to create and of course maintain. So if you find them useful, please make sure to click the thanks or join button down below. Without further ado, on Windows 11, open up Terminal. Otherwise, if you don't have Terminal, open up PowerShell as admin. The same goes for Windows 10. If you opened up Terminal, make sure you see PowerShell written at the very top. Otherwise, click the drop down and choose PowerShell. Now inside of here, I'll be typing in IEX space and inside of brackets, IRM Vlad, V-L-A-D dot T-C dot H-T and close bracket. Now, while it is technically called SD Next, it's more known by the community as Vlad, Vlad Mantic, etc. after the creator of it, even though it's technically known as SD Next. So I'm referring to both of them. When the installation begins, it'll install Chocolatey, ask you where you'd like to install it. I'll leave it in the default location of C, T, C, H, T. So I'll just hit enter. Then it'll install Git, followed by ARIA 2C. It gets to keep the project up to date. ARIA 2C for faster model downloads. And then we'll get to the CUDA installation if an NVIDIA graphics card is detected. If you don't already have CUDA installed, it'll go ahead and set it up for you. I'll enter no as I don't need to reinstall it. And it'll also prompt you about downloading CUDNN, which is extra libraries that may help compatibility if for some reason you're getting CUDA errors, though you will need an NVIDIA account to follow through with that step there, but you don't really need to worry about it at all. Then do we want to use Conda? I'll answer yes. If you have Anaconda, Miniconda, or anything like that to manage your Python installations, I'd highly recommend choosing Y or yes here. That way, all of the packages required by SD Next won't interfere with other projects, such as the aforementioned Automatic 11 Web UI. Do we want to enable auto update? I'll enter Y and hit enter. Then do we want to share it over the internet? I'll answer N here for no. Then finally, do we want shortcuts? Answer yes. And it'll create shortcuts to Vladmantic SD Next on our desktop. Finally, it'll ask us if we want to download the default model. You'll need a model in the models folder in order for this program to work. If you don't already have Stable Diffusion models, hit Y and enter. The download should be a little faster than the download that runs if you choose no here, but you don't have any models. It'll automatically download this same model when you fire it up the first time. Just this one uses ARIA 2C, so it should be a lot faster. I'll answer Y here for yes, and we'll just need to wait for the download to finish. In CTCHT Vlad Mandic, the default installation folder, you'll find a models folder, and inside of here, a stable hyphen diffusion, capital S folder, and inside of here, you can place your models. You can see the 1.5 is being downloaded here. If you choose to skip it, you'll need to create this folder and drop your models in here. Otherwise, when you launch Vlad Mandic, it'll go ahead and download stable diffusion 1.5 anyways. Also inside that folder, you'll find the LoRa and all of those other folders so you can place in the rest of your bits for your projects. Now, finally, when it's done, it'll get to actually launching the program where any missing packages will be downloaded and updated. This once again could take a bit of time. And finally, there we go, the server should start. You'll find a link down here that if you're in terminal, you can control click to open and it'll open your browser. Now, when it does, you'll see a very familiar UI here. This is the automatic 11 UI, but it's the Vlad 
Mendig SD Next fork that, in my opinion, looks a little bit better. I'm not a huge fan of the background, I do like a bit of color, but to be honest, it's a different flavor. And of course, with the different sampling methods that you get here, different automatic optimizations out of the gate, you might like this more than the original repo. I'll set the width to 768, height 768, and the sampling method to something that the normal automatic 11 repo has, in this case, DPM++ 2M SDE. I'll say space, deep space, photograph 4K, Unreal Engine, Tain, Render, er, sounds good, generate. Now we'll see how many iterations we get in console here. We're getting about four point, pretty good. And here's our resulting image, awesome. This was Vlad Mandic and it's pretty much installed now. You can do what you want. The extensions tab does let you have a ton of extensions that the normal Automatic 11 repo supports, but the search extensions tab is kind of combined in here. We can refresh the list and change the sort by to user extensions, then refresh the list and we'll see a ton of user extensions that we also get in the normal Automatic 11 repo. Anyway, now that we have a speed, which is around four iterations a second, let's see if we can recreate this in the normal stable diffusion repo. So these are the launch options I'm using here, opt STP attention and channels last API. A lot of optimizations are already applied. You could probably apply those as well to Vlad Mandic. To get there, simply right click your shortcut and open a file location, and you should be able to edit them inside of the web UI user.bat file. So opening up this web UI, I'll select the same 1.5 pruned, and of course I've lost the prompt. All right, so once again, deep space, close enough. What's really important is the same sampling method, which is DPM plus plus 2m sde and the size 768 by 768 generate we're using the same model here and we're getting around the same number of iterations do keep in mind i have optimized the starting file here if you were just a normal user of stable diffusion without understanding what does what if i start up just a plain default copy here using no launch arguments just remember we didn't do any modifying to vlad mandic it's the next it was optimized out of the box now if we try generating with these same settings you you should see that we're getting four, three and a half iterations a second, which is a lot slower. So there's optimizations out of the box, and that's definitely one of the most appealing reasons that you choose a Vlad Mandig SD next over the standard Automatic 11 stable diffusion. But there's also tons of other things set up in the background. There's a entire different community supporting it. It's a really cool project, and I'm glad that there's a fork of such a popular repo that's so well maintained. Anyways, it's up to you whether you use the standard or Vlad Mandig. Of course, you may get more or less out of it, depending on what you want. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. Once again, if you like these one-line install commands, make sure to click the thanks and join button down below to support me. I have a Patreon too. You'll also find it below. That's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.